Senate President frustrates impeachment plot against President Muhammad Buhari. Organized labor takes solidarity protest to the National Assembly. And later on the program... Most of the states, they have weak water law. They only have the existence of Ruwasa. Honorable Sada Soli, Chairman House Committee on Water Resources, joins me to talk about the National Water Resources Bill and the plenty controversies it has generated. You're watching the Hala Chambers on TVC News. I am Tijesu Adiri. The minority senators are still angry over the president of the Senate's refusal to entertain a motion to give President Muhammadu Buhari six weeks to fix the problem of insecurity or face impeachment. You are supposed to cite the order. Second, you are supposed to discuss with me what you are going to discuss. You didn't. Sec thirdly, thirdly, I read the progress report. Thirdly, uh, well, I read it when, when some of our colleagues were still not uh, this. Thing. Thirdly, we have already passed that stage. Look at where we are today. So, just hold on, please. So, at this moment, that point of order, I don't know what it is, but falls flat on its face. <laughs> Leader of the Senate. The lawmakers are disappointed and wonder why Senator Ahmed Lawan will outrightly shoot down their motion even after he was properly briefed in a closed-door meeting before they came to plenary. The minority senators walked out of plenary in protest against the decision of the president of the Senate, but they went ahead to issue the ultimatum that may mount pressure on President Buhari to seriously handle security issues. At the close session, we agreed that uh, we will give the president an ultimatum that failing, failing which, if it is not complied with, will move immediately to give an impeachment notice. And this we agreed at our, uh, the executive close session, at closed door session. Senator Betty Apiafi was blunt when she talked about the lack of confidence in the leadership of Senator Ahmed Lawan. She also says despite several resolutions on security made by the Senate, the federal government failed to adopt and implement it. Senator Piafi says the frightening security situation has shown the incompetence of heads of relevant security agencies in the country. She also expressed concerns about the state of the economy. And normally after an executive section, when we go back to plenary, we are supposed to the Senate President is supposed to give a brief of what happened in the executive session. But it wasn't done, and we just moved on. So we insisted that uh, what happened in the executive session must be reported properly, the, the, as, as in, this, in the Senate rule. And when he refused, the, um, of course, the, the uh, minority leader raised the point of order. And he tried to overrule the minority leader because he felt um, and you know, we have our other paper. In the other paper, we've actually, he quick, as soon as we resumed, he was supposed, as soon as we resumed plenary, he was supposed to have reported progress on what transpired. But he didn't and moved on to take the order of the day. You keep, we kept hoping that uh, things would get better, but gradually the, the security situation kept getting worse. We've even made other suggestions, like, I mean, seeking help if we can't handle this situation. Let's seek a, let's look for external help and see how this can be worked out. Um, and um, nothing seems to be happening. And while that is going on, we have now got, gotten into another crisis that is also crippling the economy, the oil theft. We just had to take that decision and work out. And that will be the first of many things we are going to be doing. And until the president sits up and does what is right. We just have to stop this insecurity. It's too much. We just have to stop this, the oil theft. You can imagine all the excitement about PIB. About PIB. And you know, I feel so bad. 16 years, we battled PIB to make sure it came to pass. 
at a point you say okay let's leave the uh, host community let's allow let's just allow PIB pass all the euphoria is gone mm, right now the oil companies are locking in even their production because you can't even bring out your production because along the the flow line the the, the, oil, the oil is stolen and this the theft is not the kind of theft we had. people are actually specializing in stealing this oil and you know it's so sad because with this ukraine ukraine and russian war and you know they're taking advantage of this to 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 build new new um business relationships new supply uh, uh, new countries to supply products to and earn more money for the country In the House of Representatives, there's also talk about impeachment, but this time it is to clarify that there is no plot to impeach Speaker Femi Bajabi Amila if he fails to support the passage of the National Water Bill. The leader of the House, Adodogwa, says they are more concerned with matters of security and will remain committed to their duty of legislation. This House, in every aspect of it, in all ramifications, had never had an instance where we contemplated impeaching our able speaker, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila. In the ranks of the opposition, we have the leader of the opposition seated here with us. There was no such contemplation. There is nothing like any threat to impeach Mr. Speaker. Um, secondly, the issue of a bill or no bill hasn't even been brought before us on the floor for consideration. Work of passing the bill is not, you know, resi resident, you know, within the powers of Mr. Speaker. It's in the House, on the majority. Wh whatever the majority, you know, decide is what will go to some ignorant, uneducated, lazy journalist pounds on this bill. And I can guarantee you, all this reportage that is going on on our papers were based on Ignorant. The Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Ahmed Idris Wasi, is optimistic that the presidential flag bearer of the All Progressives Congress and his running mate are best fit to govern Nigeria. The Deputy Speaker says he is fully in support of their candidacy and will work to ensure they get votes that will propel them to victory at the presidential ballot next year. The Deputy Speaker said this when he received the Ashiwaju Pact with Citizens Campaign Organization, a political support group promoting the Tinubu Shatima presidential ticket. There's no doubt that the choice of Ashiwaju, first I want to say power comes from God. He has demonstrated equally, uh, equitably. He has given his, out his best. He has been in the political terrain for years. He has developed people. There's no segment of society that you go not have one person or the other that he has helped or touched. Uh, and I believe that he is a candidate to be. The Nigerian Labour Congress made good its threat to hold a mega rally in protest against the continued closure of the nation's public universities. The Congress dismissed insinuations that the protest rally was to discredit the ruling government to the Labour Party's advantage. My colleague, Jockey Adisa, reports. After Tuesday's rally across the states, the Nigeria Labour Congress on Wednesday led the four unions and the universities to register their displeasure over the over five-month-old strike. Security presence was visible following intelligence reports of a likely infiltration of the protest by some undesirable elements. <laughs> from the Unity Fountain through the streets of Abuja to the Federal Secretariat and finally to the National Assembly, the message was clear. The rally has shown that Nigerian people now realize what is happening. Nigerian workers, Nigerian parents, even Nigerian students have realized what is happening. We've signed agreements and in that agreement there is a portion where it says that after every three years we must renegotiate. If you say OSAS is not good enough, how about U3PS? If you say U3PS is not good enough, how about if they match them and they become one? We have insecurity, gender-based violence that is going on, nobody is saying something. If you cannot govern, resign! At the National Assembly, 
The leadership of the parliament formally received a letter from the NLC detailing its demands. We have a documented complaint that have captured all the issues we have stated and what we expect of the parliament. If before now they have not looked at the issue as a serious issue, we want the parliament, the parliament of the Nigerian people, to take this issue very seriously. No civilized country in the world where students in the university will be away from classroom for five months, not to talk of eight months, not to talk of months more. So we are with you. Ayub Bawaba describes as baseless reports that the protest was politically motivated. Is it a serious issue? Does it call for action? Have NLC not mediated behind the scene? Have NLC not tried to resolve the issue? That is the issue. So basically it's about diverting our attention. Nigerian workers cannot be divided. They, the attention cannot be diverted. The National Assembly is a busy place. As the bastion of democracy, it is a place where bills are presented, motions debated, laws made, and the yearnings of the people are laid bare. Come with us as we take you through the workings of the National Assembly. We take you through plenary, committee meetings, and probes, all to ensure smooth working of the democratic process. Joining me now on the program as we shift the conversation to the National Water Resource Bill is Honorable Sada Soli. It's good to have you on the program. Thank you. What is the Water Resource Bill all about? Well, th this bill, first of all, this is an executive bill. This bill uh, contains four existing laws in the water sector. The National Water Resources Act, the Nigerian River Basin Development Authority Act, the National Water Resources Institute, Kaduna Mando, then Nigeria Hydrological uh, Services Agency. Those are the four acts. Then uh, they wanted to bring these acts together in tandem with global trends where you, you, you don't like uh, pieces of legislation from a sector you know, uh, spread all over, just like what we're doing what we did to the power sector, what we are doing to the aviation sector, and then, then also the, 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 the water sector because it's quite, it's a huge sector with a lot of value chain. And it's generally talking about uh, uh, transborder water resources that interconnect more than one state. So it's not talking about state water resources, it's talking about national water resources as provided in the Constitution, uh, uh, item 64 of the executive uh, uh, of, uh, exclusive list. In your own view, why has it generated so much hues and cries? In my own views, I think, uh, I, I think it, it was based on the, the initial draft the initial draft came with a number of contentious issues and it was not subjected to other key stakeholders. But this, uh, this bill that was regazetted, that the House instructed to it for it to be regazetted, it has taken care of all the uh, concerns of the stakeholders, particularly the Governor's Forum, then also the concerns of uh, the, envir the environmentalists that are involved in the water sector, then uh, the water sanitation and hygiene uh, aspect of the, the sector, which were not there before. And all these things were taken care of. The concerns of the Governor's Forum was addressed. The concerns of the Attorney General that borders on the constitutional uh, issues were also addressed. And all these things were taken off. But generally the suspicion, any law, not only in this country, any law that is subjected to public opinion and it's received misunderstanding from the public, you can, the parliament will have a teething problems in order to, 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 to get it through. Can we talk about the benefits of this proposed law? I, I think there are a lot of benefits, depending on the perspective you look at them. You, you see, um, this bill, when it's passed, it will, 
it will involve uh, 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 private PPP because the wash aspect, water sanitation and hygiene will be there. The value chain in the water sector will also uh, open up the, the sector, people who will invest. And then also there is um, the issue of providing um, efficient, sustainable and beneficial use of water in the public interest. Because people need to be protected. Then also there is the, the meeting the basic human needs of present and future generation. We need to have this regulation that will guarantee these things. Because let me be honest with you, the next war in the next 50, 60 years is going to be a water war. It is happening between Ethiopia, Sudan, and Egypt. Because the Ethiopians, they dammed the river Nile upward, upstream, and they built a Renaissance dam. And then they're having problems with Egypt and Sudan. These are some of the issues. Granted, in the next 50, 60 years, the states on the River Niger and the River Benue decide to go into partnership with some multinationals and dump this these two rivers. What will happen downstream? What will happen to our brothers and sisters down the stream? The, remember, the source of fresh water in the Niger Delta, the sources of fresh water to the Niger Delta is not from the sea. It's from the River Niger and the River Benue. Granted, the seven states that are on River Benue and the eight states that are on River Niger, they dam the river. What will happen? Remember, before we dam River Niger, the Kainji Dam, we had to go into negotiation with other countries that are downstream, particularly Niger. We have to do that. We have to guarantee them that we will allow some significant flow of water that will get to them. How true is it that the bill proposes to bring Ruga through the back door, speaking about ceding lands in the state to the federal government? No. What is Ruga? Ruga is a federal government policy on rural grazing area. Rural grazing area is basically purely agriculture based. This is talking purely about water resources. So you see, this is one of the aspects of uh, the, 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 the proponents against the bill spreading this kind of fake news, rumors, and cheating Nigerians. The honest Nigerians that wanted to understand the, the, the advantages and disadvantages of this bill that come with Ruga. What is Ruga? How many states are even implementing the policy of Ruga? Ruga. I mean, a number of states are leveraging on the federal government policy on Ruga. It's not about water resources. Ruga is not about water resources. Ruga generally is about uh, agriculture. Are you saying the bill does not propose to take land from the states? No. Go to section 50 of the bill. It's subjected to the Land Use Act. The river basins, the 12 river basins that we have that are operating in the states, they cannot take one inch of a land without the approval of the state's government. They are subjected. The bill must have recourse, must have recourse to Land Use Act. It is there in section 50 of the bill. Even in the former, even in the former act of N River Basin Development Act, it is there that they must subject themselves in request of a land for their operations. They must subject themselves to Land Use Act. This is an executive bill. Why did it land on your table? Because I'm the chairman committee on water resources. I met it during the when we came in the ninth assembly when the bill was passed by the House of Representatives but was not passed by the Senate, and then it has to go through the normal legislative process. And then which committee will drive it? Naturally, is the Committee on Water Resources that will drive it. And I do not want to derelict. I share the concerns of my colleagues and other Nigerians on some of the issues, but I do not want to derelict on the duty the House gave me to deal with the, with the bill. If today the House will ask the committee, please, we have, the House has taken over this bill, and then I think that's uh, that's 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 something else that can, 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 can be done. But the House has given the committee a duty to do, and we will do it uh, reasonably, fairly, with all sense of responsibility. You have put your credibility on the line as far as this bill is concerned. How well can your colleagues trust you in your sincerity of purpose? I, I think we're fairly, I can say, it uh, to be modest. To be modest, I, th I think we... I, we have generated some level of confidence and uh, we have created uh, a very generous 
and fair fraternity in the house. We have good understanding with our colleagues, and I think our colleagues uh, will believe will believe in what we do. And uh, what what is the gain? What is the gain if I should get involved in a legislation that will show change a section of this country? With the level of noise this bill has generated, how optimistic are you that it will receive the support of your colleagues? That's, that's basically the responsibility of the House. If they, I would do my job as a, as a chairman of the committee, drive the process, get it to the floor, get it to the members. Where they need more education, I will educate them. Where they need more explanation by virtue of me being the chairman of quarter resources, I will offer the, 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 the explanation. But the obligation to pass the law is on the House. You were not in the House in the 8th Assembly. It was passed then. What more can be done to get Nigerians to buy into the bill? I, I think with, the, with more education, more interaction, I mean, open it up. I think that while there wasn't much engagement of the stakeholders in the sector and Nigerians, because water affects everybody. But most, pe most, importantly, most importantly, people need to understand, it's not the water you drink that's the issue here. It's not the water that you drink, that you and I drink, that is the issue here. No. Even the protection of our rivers, even the protection of our surface and underground water resources, these are some of the issues. Look at the amount, look at the number of investors in water sector. Look at the number of the Chinese companies that are operating, that are obstructing our underground water resources. How much do they pay? How does this bill help in curtailing the drilling of boreholes by every home? That's, that's why the bill is advocating to form in the bill uh, Water Resources Regulatory Commission at the federal level. Then the state can, can, can leverage on that also uh, do that. What it means by we c the federal government can't go and curtail the sinking of borehole in Lagos State. No, that's not what the bill is saying. The bill is providing the framework, the framework for Lagos State to leverage, for Kano State to leverage, for Aqua Ivum to leverage, for Niger State to leverage. No, they are not going to regulate the sinking or the operation of borehole drillers. No, but what we are saying, the people or the companies or the persons that are involved in this business must be licensed. The bill has been gazetted. How soon do we see it come for second reading? When the House, I came on explain, uh, a personal explanation to give members the time to read it, understand it, subject it to other third, uh, third, uh, third, uh, third, op uh, third person's opinion, and then all other concerns. People will leverage on our holiday, take it back home, because it concerns everybody, even with those that they are not concerned about the water bill. Now because it is the, it is the, it is the thing that is uh, going trending, they are now they are concerned. You, you understand? Let them subject it to them, explain to them. Then when we come, if it is the wish of the house, remember, it's an executive bill, it's owned by the house to, now. It's not owned by SADA or any other individual. It's owned by the house. If it is the wish of the house to list it for second reading, to look at uh, the merits and the merits of the bill, for before it goes for uh, public hearing, because we want it to go for public hearing. Without being pessimistic, what happens if this bill is rejected again? If this bill is rejected, the water sector will continue to be regulated by the four existing laws. It's not that the, the water sector, uh, the national water sector will be left uh, unattended. No, there are existing laws. If this bill is passed, then those existing laws will be repealed. If they're not repealed, the existing laws will be passed. And then what people are afraid of, they will suffer it from the existing laws because they are there. Let's talk about insecurity. What more can this government do to address the surging insecurity? Well, I, I think uh, that's, uh, that's entirely a different, uh, a different thing. It's a very difficult situation. This country is completely in another phase of development. Uh, the challenges of development, we are facing it in a completely different perspective. Uh, it's something that I'm very, very sympathetic for this country. But what the government should do, the government should just get up, 
get its act together and deal with this issue decisively. It's just a need for political will. The deputy speaker spoke about the DSS receiving 44 intelligence report before the Kuji attack. What does it say? People, people must account of their dereliction of duty. And this is what we are lacking in this country. I have said these times without number when the Abuja train uh, incidents happened, when the Minister of uh, um, Transport uh, confronted the committee, I was there. I challenged him that I'm surprised up to the moment that you are, we are talking about this is no head uh, roll. So heads must roll. People must account for their actions and inaction, inactions in the process of public service. People must render accounts when they have been given responsibility to this church. I, I think some people must be punished. Do you support calls for international support? There is no country that will not deny international support in terms of security. It depends on how it will come. You, don't, you can't expect American soldiers to be on our ground. You don't expect the Chinese soldiers to be on our ground. But I believe the international uh, community that are helping this country in one way or the other, intelligence sharing, some of the equipments, the American sold the Tucano, uh, and some of the uh, hardwares, the, Chi the Chinese have sold some hardware, the Turkish, the Russians, Jordanians. We have all gotten help, but we just need to get our acts together and get to deal with this. Look, this issue, I'm from a, I'm from a front line uh, uh, states and the front line local government why this crisis is, uh, is, is happening daily. We just need to gather our, um, our political will and deal with this, with this matter. That is all on the program this week. Remember, you can watch a repeat broadcast on Sunday, 7 a.m. You can also see this episode again on TVC News YouTube channel. Do not forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you for watching. I am Tijesu Adiri. See you next time.